Do you know who you are? You're even Steven. Because this week on Close Talkers, we watched Season 5, Episode 21, The Opposite. <laughs> So, Katie. Hi. How did you like the opposite? I liked it. I liked it. This is pretty peak Seinfeld. Yeah. The writing is good. The stories intertwine. It's not too over the top Kramer. There's references to things I recognize, like characters Yankees. know who they are. It's not yeah. like. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nobody's. Yeah. Nobody's being weird. There's a lot. There, there's great face acting from Elaine. Like, mm. yeah. Good episode. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. I agree with everything, all, all, all those notes. Okay. We're done. See you next week. Uh, so the opposite was written by Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld and Andy Cohen. It was, or Cowan, not Cohen. Like the Bravo host, Andy Cohen? C-O-W-A-N. Oh, that's a different Andy Cohen. Cowan. Uh, it was directed by Tom Sharonis. It aired on May 19th, 1994. Vulture.com ranked it as the third best Seinfeld episode. Yeah, I buy that. And Screen Crush had it slide in right behind the contest at number two. Holy moly. They both agreed. Yeah. And so do we. Yeah. Has this ever happened? I don't know. All around good episode. Yep. I think that might be a better... Is that a better intro to Seinfeld? Like, if you were had to, like, be like, oh, is it better than the contest as a, I don't know. I think maybe because you get, you touch on backstories as well. Mm, sure, yeah. But do you need to? I don't know. Well, you're saying if somebody had never seen anything. Yeah. Would you make them watch this or the contest? Yeah. You had to choose one episode to prove that Seinfeld is good. Mm, I don't know. Having now seen five seasons of it, I would say this one because. Okay. What? H having now seen five seasons of Seinfeld, <laughs> I do not think it is good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good episode in context. But if I hadn't seen any oh. episode, hmm. maybe the contest would have been it's like, all right, one shot. Here it is, mm. distilled down to 20 minutes. Interesting. I don't know. Maybe our listeners will comment. Maybe. Listeners? Hello? Hello? <laughs> Who are the guest stars? So I didn't realize while we were watching this episode that it was the season five finale. Oh, yes. I knew that. Um, and maybe that was why there was uh, several returning guest stars. So we had Estelle Harris. Uh, I wrote down Frank Costanza. <laughs> 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 yep, Frank uh -huh. Costanza coming back as Frank Costanza. Uh, Jerry Stiller. We had Richard Fancy. We had Siobhan Fallon. Uh, Siobhan? Siobhan. Who's yeah. that? Uh, the roommate? Tina? Yeah. Tina? Who's Richard Fancy? Mr. Littman? Mr. Littman. Okay. And Melanie Smith? Who's that? Rachel. Okay. Uh, so those were, those were all people that came back. We also had Dee Dee Pfeiffer. Who played Victoria? Who's Victoria? Just the woman that George approached. Okay. That ordered the same okay. lunch as him. Okay. She was on a, or she is on, I think, a, a TV series called Big Sky. Hmm. She was on Sybil and uh, a movie called The All Nighter, hmm. as well as other things. We also had Regis Philbin. Sure, Reg. Uh huh. He was on a show called Live with okay. Regis and Kathy Lee. He was also on a show called Live with Regis. Uh huh. He was also on a show called Live with Regis and Kelly. What year do you think uh, his span started and ended on Live? So I never watched any of this. I, my my friend was really into it. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. Ooh. Todd. <laughs> Your childhood friend was really into live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about really, but like, 
Wasn't it on while we were at school? Yeah, but like, you know when you like you were sick or you stayed home that day, you'd watch like The Price is Right. The Price is Right! So this was early, like, uh, live was on, I think, the hour just before The Price is Right, or maybe even earlier than that. Oh. And like, he would be like, oh, well, we gotta watch live. Okay. It's always on at the dentist. <laughs> Are uh, you looking up the answer? Don't no, look up. No, no, I lo- was... I was looking up something else that I forgot to look up. Well, yeah, but while you're doing that, you're going to look up the answer. No, I'm not. I can't ask you to guess something, and then you pick up your phone and start Googling stuff. I was Googling something I meant to go- – this is stupid. Okay, so I'm going to guess that Regis started on live in 1985 and ended in 2012. That's not that's, – that's pretty close. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, started live with uh, Regis and Kathy Lee in 1988. Oh. And ended uh, live with Regis and Kelly in 2011. Look at this. Yeah. His first um, foray into television and talk shows was a TV show called The Regis Philbin Show, which aired, uh, which began airing in 1964. Oh my God. Uh, and it replaced The Steve Allen Show. Um, after uh, contract negotiations between the studio and Steve Allen uh, fell apart. It's thrilling. He was also the host, uh, the original host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah, I know that. I'm going through oh, the sorry. things that he's done. <laughs> Who else was on this episode? Kathy Lee Gifford. Mm-hmm. She was on a show called Live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Oh uh, she was also on a show called Today with Kathy and Hoda. I have actually seen a little bit of Kathy and Hoda, or today, I guess, Mm -hmm. because uh, actresses and podcasters we like, June Diane Raphael and Jessica St. Clair, were guest hosting on Today. Oh, were they? Or they were like, I don't know the format. They were on Today for like several hours. I think it's a TV show based around the premise that you will watch two women drink drink wine wine for four hours. (laughs) Yeah. I think – I don't know, and I don't care to look it up, but I think they don't start drinking wine right away. I think that shows up in, like, the fourth hour when maybe it's, like, 10 to 11. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't think it starts that early. Um, I'm not super familiar with the show, but a lot of the articles that um, I read talked about – because Kathleen left uh, live under kind of unfortunate circumstances where her husband cheated on her and then – she started taking like a lot of flack in the media. Do you remember huh. this at all? Yeah, it's coming back to me. But why would she have to quit live? Because it, he cheated on her. Yeah. Ugh, I guess it was the 90s. It was the 90s and that was... Jesus. Yeah. Anyways, so... We can't uh, have a fallen woman talking to us from the television. The point that I was going to make is a lot of the articles that I was reading about when she joined live... Sorry, when she joined today with Hoda, is that it was at a different time slot than live, so it wasn't directly competing with her previous. Okay. So it's um, later in the morning. Yeah. Oh, okay. So a glass of wine isn't unheard of at noonish. Yeah. I think it starts at ten and then it goes until I don't know. It's a four the hour show. Early hours of the afternoon. That's that's it's literally today. It's the whole day. There's just there's no Is there nothing worth putting on television? Are the writers constantly on strike? (laughs) We've got to get the writers back. The the writers struck a deal, didn't they? Do you hear about this? I don't know. I think they got a deal going. Oh, good. Won't be stuck watching, I don't know, darts. Poker? Remember remember when, (laughs) I guess poker was because the- the, the, Baseball strike? Yeah, yeah, uh, the sports strike. It wasn't a writer's strike. So- Ritter was strike. baseball and hockey the same year? It was in 94. They both went on strike. Oh, maybe? I think so. Uh, technically, it was a lockout, not a strike. But. Sorry. Sorry. I wanted to bring up uh, what I was Googling, which you were bothering me about, about. So Regis Philbin was named after the Regis High School. I know that. It's a. It's a... Private all male Jesuit secondary school for Roman Catholic boys in Manhattan. Wait a second. What? He was named after the school? He was named after the school. Like, we got this baby. You know what we got to do? Name him after the school that he might one day go to. He didn't go. He was not accepted. 
Wow. At least if you believe um, a book I read recently <laughs> by alumni Colin Jost, SNL writer oh. and uh, husband of Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, were there any other guest stars? Nobody noteworthy is Kathy Lee Gifford. Uh, is she you're still? You're wrong. Oh, French Stewart? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Third Rock from the Sun. Was this his first appearance? In the TV sh- In Seinfeld? No, in on TV. Oh, I don't know. This is your job. I didn't even look him up. He was. He was. Oh my god, that was the star for me. I gasped when I saw French Stewart. No, forget it. You the got whole- to. You got to. You got to. You got to. You got to Google. I get to Google. I get to drink. See, he wasn't even. He wasn't even on my screen. Look at the, look at the cast. But do you remember him oh, look, from look, the look, episode? Look, 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 look. look, look. I and can I have see. To go, I don't care. Bar, <clears throat> to go down. This episode also guest starred French Stewart. If uh-huh. you didn't notice, uh-huh. uh, this was not his first TV role or appearance. He was also in the remake of the new WKRP in Cincinnati. Oh my! For twenty three episodes. Kind of so interesting that his first role he got in television was a like a recurring role in a like in a remake of a popular it, show. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little bit odd. Uh, he was also uh, in Third Rock from the Sun yeah. um, for many years, along with Wayne Knight, who I'd forgotten was in Third Rock from the Sun. Anyways, huh. he is also in uh, the movie Inspector Gadget Two. He made pl- a memorable cameo on Community, sure, as a French Stewart lookalike. Yep. Role he was born to play. <laughs> so I haven't talked in a while. <laughs> I'll shut up, I guess. No, let's throw it back to last week when I asked you if you remembered this episode. Don't you do a synopsis at some point? Take a chicken salad on rye, untoasted, with a side of potato salad and a cup of tea. So how'd you do? I think I nailed it. Chicken salad on rye. Such a good line. It's like perfect. (laughs) Okay, so I'll read the Netflix synopsis now. George does the opposite of everything his instincts say. Jerry is even Steven. Kramer promotes his coffee table book, Elaine Falls on Hard Times. So the first stand-up, Jerry's talking about what's with men and handkerchiefs. Can't believe people carrying around handkerchiefs. It's interesting that Jerry specifically talks about men carrying around handkerchiefs. Sure. So either in the 90s, only men were using handkerchiefs, or Jerry has no issue with women using handkerchiefs. Handkerchiefs? Handkerchiefs. Well, what's the women's equivalent? Uh, A crumpled up tissue from the bottom of the purse? No, stuffed down their sleeve. Yeah. (laughs) It's warm. So you uh, you use a handkerchief. I am a fan of handkerchiefs. Mm -hmm. I have about 20 men's handkerchiefs. All the same pattern. Why are, they, why are they unisex? Why aren't they unisex? They're men's handkerchiefs because I had to buy them in the men's section of the bay because they don't sell women's handkerchiefs. So that's what the bay sells these days. <laughs> what do they have there? They got wallets, belts, and handkerchiefs. Pretty much. Yeah. But I, I'm one of those people who always just has like just a little, like I have to wipe my nose just a little bit when I like come in from outside or I'm in a air conditioned mm. building. Mm-hmm. So I always have a handkerchief, and if I blow my nose in it, yes, it does go back and it, it goes in a special pocket of my purse where there's nothing else, mm. and then it goes in the wash that mm-hmm. day. So I'm not carrying around snotty hankies. I have enough that I can just- Well, you are carrying the brown until you put them in the wash. <laughs> I'm not going to throw it in the trash. <laughs> Still carrying it around. I mean, they are they are more uh, environmental, probably more yeah. economical. Yeah. Um, I mean, probably you could buy a handkerchief for the price of a box of Kleenex. Yeah, I would say yes. Yeah, and it'll last you longer than that box of Kleenex. Of course, but it'll be much less gross. Much more gross. The, the box of Kleenex will be much oh. less gross. Well, listen, if you don't see a garbage can, you got to carry around a snot filled tissue till you do. That's fair, but I mean, for the most part, where you're blowing your nose, there's there's garbage cans available. Not always. And if not, it, it, it's it 
if it's as bad as a handkerchief, but you can also then, throw once you away. do come to a garbage can, throw it away. I guess. If you remember to. Yeah, of course you're going to remember. You got a snotty, snotty. Uh, no, you put it in the pocket of your jacket and you find it three weeks later. Mm. George goes to the sea. We start off with forlorn George and celebrating Elaine. Mm-hmm. A lot of big decisions uh, end up happening um, on this pier. Yeah. Yep. The, this is the first. Oh, okay. I was I was waiting for you to remind me because I couldn't think of any. Oh no, I don't think any have happened yet. Okay. Elaine says, "I don't fool around, baby." When she gets her promotion and raise. Did she get both a promotion and a raise? Yeah. Hmm. Did they say what her new job was? No. I wonder if that woman who hurt her foot and got promoted didn't work out and then Elaine got her Uh. job. Elaine's hair is like smooth curly now. Mm. I feel like it changed from the last episode to this episode. I, I didn't see the like filming schedule. I wonder if like the they filmed this along with season six. Oh maybe. Or, I don't know. Maybe there was a break between And Jerry's hair is very fluffy. Hmm. You're getting like peak fluff mullet. Yeah. There were some questionable shirts Jerry was wearing in this uh, episode. Did you see the mock turtleneck he was wearing at the Costanza's house? It was green. Oh, I noticed his nipples a lot. <laughs> Well, how could you miss them? <laughs> yeah. I didn't I did not notice his <laughs> nipples. I noticed the collar on it was like weird. Yeah. But an a, a bright emerald green yeah. mock turtleneck. Elaine's gonna move in with Jake Jarmel. Everything's going great. You know what? I have to admit I don't remember him. He was the um writer who Elaine was editing his book and there were uh Too many exclamation points? Yeah, not enough exclamation points. Oh sorry. Uh he you know, she had the baby. And she he had didn't. the baby. Okay. She, she had the baby, and then she edited his book. And I remember the name, but I couldn't like when he came on screen. I it didn't ring a bell to me. Mm. But her facial expressions when George is talking about his decision to, you know, he's talking about his life. Mm-hmm. You know, I I was I had everything going for me. I was smart, and her reactions are just beautiful. Not academically, but. <laughs> So as usual, order tuna on toast, coleslaw with a cup of coffee. That sounds like a pretty good order. I would go for that. I don't think I've ever ordered a tuna sandwich. Ever. Even at like Subway? Nope. I am a deli meats gal. There's something about tuna salad, chicken salad. Maybe it's the mayonnaise. It doesn't seem like it's going to be good. I don't know. Like it's going to be fresh? Yeah. Mm. Like you could hide a lot of sins in there. I do remember when I worked uh, at uh, the bagel shop when I was a teenager and they were like, you got to check the date on the on the tuna all the yeah. time. And okay. I was kind of like, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> I do remember one guy came, once came in, he ordered a cinnamon raisin bagel, toasted, tuna. No. Cheese. No. Tomatoes. Mustard. No, 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 no. That's awful. Yep. So awful that I remember it <laughs> 25 years later. It's entirely too much tuna. (laughs) 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 So he orders chicken salad on rye. Well, he didn't specify what bread. I the guess toasted just, one? Yeah. Yeah. I guess just white bread. Probably. Rye bread is so good. Yeah, but I, I would probably rather have rye with tuna than rye with chicken salad. I don't care. Rye with anything is better than regular bread. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's if tiny. I'm ordering, yeah. If I'm oh. ordering like a side of toast uh, with like a breakfast at a restaurant. You don't get the rye option a lot. They usually don't give, but they usually have it. And you can ask. <gasps> I've never thought to go off book. Oh, come on. You gotta go off book. With potato salad and tea. I'm definitely picking lunch number one. It's a much better lunch. I'm I'm not a... Uh, you know what? Potato salad is so iffy. I feel like I like every coleslaw, and it's a safer bet. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know what kind of tea they got. It's also America. They can't make good tea in America. No, they're going to microwave it. Yeah, probably. Leave the bag in too long. Ugh. Put in milk, sugar, water, and then the bag. Mm. 
Do you think salmon is the opposite of tuna? Or is chicken the opposite of tuna? I think chicken is more opposite than salmon. I agree. What Cherry says, salmon is the opposite of tuna. Are you talking about eating the meat or the animal? What? <laughs> you, you, when you eat the meat, you eat the animal. What? But the animals could be opposite, but eating the meat oh. could be... I'm sorry. What's the opposite of cow, then? I, th- I think the, the opposite of eating a tuna sandwich is, like, it could be, like, throwing up a tuna sandwich. <laughs> what is going on? Uh, okay, assuming you eat that George didn't come to, to purge at a monk's cafe. I think opposite implies that there's a binary thing and there's no there's no binary decision for a tuna sandwich listen i wrote down george isn't familiar with the concept of also wrong he thinks every instinct he has is wrong therefore the opposite well jerry says the opposite must be Mm. right but nobody's considered that he could also be wrong there are many wrongs Mm. that wouldn't make for a very funny episode though i think it would if if confident George goes out into the mm. world and then gets like smacked down because he's still making different bad decisions. And it's just like, regardless of what he does, it's <laughs> yeah, he's, he's God's hacky sack. <laughs> yes. I laughed really hard when he just immediately said, my name's George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. He did. I think the, like giving his real name is the funniest part of that. Why? Well, because you just immediately know that his initial instinct is to not give his real name. I'm Art Vandelay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. On his date with Victoria, Victoria, uh, the guys behind them in the movie theater are kicking her seat. Mm -hmm. And George stands up and he gives them what for. And one of the things he says is, I'm going to show you what it's like. He goes, I'm going to take you outside and I'm going to show you what it's like. So that line was taken um, verbatim from a Buddy Rich bootleg video where he was yelling at his orchestra. (laughs) Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. The whole thing? No, no. I think just that specific line, actually. Oh, I'm going to show you what it's like. (laughs) That's so vaguely threatening and (laughs) nonspecific. I'm going to show you what it's like. He's gonna he's gonna get behind them and I'd bug them during a movie. <laughs> I'm show you what this is like, or I'm gonna beat you up and I'm gonna show you what that's like. Mm. So I looked up Juji fruits. Oh yeah, Do, are, are they real? They're real. Okay, sure. Yeah, they're from. They've been around since the twenties. They they were all manufactured during 1920, <laughs> and that's why they're so hard and stale. <laughs> they're by the same company that makes Jujubees. Oh. They're both popular like movie theater snacks, but right. they were from the same Thank place. You. And I have some facts. Um, what do you think the green flavor is? I'm not going to guess lime because that would be obvious. Apple? It was mint. Whoa. Until 1999. Uh, and then people were like, the mint is gross. So they changed it to lime. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> and... In the 70s, they had like a contest where you could cut a little token out of the box and send them in. Mm -hmm. You will never guess what you got back if you sent in tokens to Juji Fruits. But try. A uh, three-night cruise from Alaska. You would get a leather belt and a brass buckle. Not bad. (laughs) From candy. Why? Does the buckle look like a juji fruit? I don't know. I don't know if I've ever specifically had juji fruit, but I'm imagining like super hard, like getting stuck in your teeth. Wine gums. I think even harder than wine gums. Yeah. Like be- you could rattle them in the box. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're getting some solid like like baby teeth sounds out of that box. They do ask Elaine later why she put so many in her mouth. Mm. Because I like them. So at that time, the green one was mint. Yes. Gross. And she's just stuffing it in there with, uh, you know, orange, lemon, cherry, grape. Gross. Nasty. So Kramer goes on, Regis and Kathy Lee. Yeah, you weren't a big fan of this uh, scene, huh? No. 
You know who else was not a big fan of the scene? Regis Philbin. <laughs> yeah, I bet. The line, this guy is Bonkos. Yeah. He voiced concern that that wasn't a good line before the scene. He says it like eight times. Asked them to take it out. And then afterwards, uh. like publicly was like upset that they made him say it and left it in. I've never heard the term Bonkos. No. Bonkers? Sure. Bonko? Uh-huh. Uh, Bonkos. No. They introduced him as Kramer, one name. Does, you don't know that he has a first name at this point. Wouldn't they ask? They're like, oh, okay, and what's your first name? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> maybe maybe for the, the, the book jacket? <laughs> By Kramer. It's a, it's a mononym, like Cher. Uh, uh-huh. So everything's going great for Jerry. You know, he has one show cancel on him. He gets another show the same weekend. Mm-hmm. Plays poker. He, he breaks even. Rachel's not digging the relationship. She breaks up. He's kind of like, eh, no big deal. I'll, I'll uh, meet somebody new. Everything will be fine for me. And I wrote- uh, Even Steven? Jerry is a rich white guy who navigates life without a care in the world. Yep. Do you know any even Stevens? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think, I think if you have friends that I, I, I'm actually talking about this recently with someone and I feel like there are people, um, that I, I, I know it's illogical and I'm a very logical person, but there are people anecdotally who are lucky and there are people who are less lucky. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can think of two of your family members who are lucky. Yep. Are you thinking it's of just, and Yep. Okay. <laughs> they they win lotteries. They go to the casino. They win slot machines. They make sports bet. They pay off. Like they're just they're just people that have whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And and I know like a distribution of events over a course of time, <laughs> everything evens out. At the same time, I believe that these people are lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I think it's easier to identify people that are lucky than people that are like just like even Steven. So I don't know any even Stevens, but I definitely I know some Georges, I guess, in this episode. <laughs> There's actually, well, you can cut this out. Um, I think it's in Ring World by Larry Niven. Um, aliens have, you want me to spoil Ring World for you? It's a sci-fi novel from the 1970s. <laughs> uh, have selectively bred humans to be luckier. Okay. And so the premise behind that is like, in your life, there will be a, you know, you can you can classify events as good and bad, and there will be a normal distribution of those events. But in a population, there will be a a normal distribution where that mean event lands in terms of good and bad. Mm-hmm. And so if you can selectively breed the people that continue like that have the good events, eventually you'll have somebody that like the lower end of their bell curve is still like an incredibly good thing that happens. Oh, but wouldn't logically then if you, if you did that, wouldn't you have to create people who had phenomenally bad luck to even it out again? Like not intentionally. No, I don't know. Would it's, it just be I, I guess culled from the well, population? No, I, that's not how like selectively breeding goes, right? Sure, but if you're considering luck, which is not an inherited trait, and it's not a- The premise of this is that it's an inherited trait. Okay. You can consider. <laughs> I won't. Nah. So what did you think? Did you immediately realize when uh, Elaine gets the news that Jake Jarmel has been sideswiped by a taxi, and then she like goes back for Juju Fruit? What was your- like? Did you initially think like anything was wrong, or was it until Jake confronted her, being like, Hey, you hear I'm- I'm- to have a problem- I I really had no thought at that point. I figured that it wasn't going to last with Jake Jarmel because he can't handle not being the first priority on Elaine's mind. Like, he expects her to... He's so fragile, physically and emotionally, that he expects her to run screaming out of a movie theater to his side. Well... I what if she didn't have dinner? I don't know if I don't know if he needs to be Elaine's number one priority, but maybe just higher than candy. Listen, Jerry had a good point. Why didn't she eat it in the taxi? Because she ate the popcorn. popcorn. So you know what? Your belly's full. Don't eat the candy 
in his room. Or, Have some before you get there. Or, or bring it and be like, oh, you know, I, th- I thought, you know, we didn't get to go to the movies, but I, I brought this. Yeah. But Elaine's a terrible person. Mm, she did let in a jewel thief. Mm, used Canadian money in the washing machine. <laughs> Does she have a lot of Canadian quarters? I don't know. I mean, we don't think about it because, like, you 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 know, you'll often get like a, an American coin in your change, and you just like yeah, here's pass it on twenty five cents. Yeah. yeah, but like, I imagine in like America that that would be daunting and confusing. And what do you do with this? I don't know. I <laughs> I thought you were going to say, you know, with the with the disparity in our currencies. Mm. If you keep accepting Canadian quarters, you're actually losing quite a lot of money. When the toonie was introduced, I got a Indonesian like 1000 rupees coin. Oh yeah. And it it wasn't the right size and it wasn't the right proportions, but it was a gold circle surrounded by like a yeah. silvery circle. Yeah. Um and I as kept change? that for years <laughs> as change from a <laughs> golf course or something. And I kept that coin for years and I called it my lucky coin. Uh-huh. It was like one side was a palm tree and one side was an eagle, I think. And did it bring you luck? No, I consider myself an unlucky person. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm, a, you, I'm in a lane. When when we go to sporting events- I don't touch the 2020 tickets, the 2020, the 50-50 tickets. <laughs> you don't touch anything. I'm not, I'm not familiar with the concept. That's how <laughs> unlucky I am. We get them because like they're supporting charity and you will not- Mm-mm. You know what? We never win. So maybe you should touch the ticket. Mm. We know someone who won 50-50. I guess he's a pretty lucky person. We he do? listens to the podcast. Who? He did? Yeah. Where? Did he win 50-50 at a Jays game? It was like 70 grand. Did he? Oh my God. I think so. I don't remember this. Uh, please let us know if, if I'm correct or uh, if I made that up. Okie dokie. There's another guest star you didn't mention who's important. The principal from The Breakfast Club. He's the Yankees guy. You mess with the bull, you get the horns? That is not the same actor. That's the principal from The Breakfast Club. Okay, turn on your computer. He is a recognizable guy, and I almost added him, but he's pretty much a single scene, and I didn't think it was worthwhile. But it's not. Oh, it is the guy. (laughs) Can you turn around and say that into the mic? It is the guy. Paul Gleason, known for The Breakfast Club. Not another teen movie. And Trading Places. Voice of George Steinbrenner's Larry David. This is the first time that Larry David does the voice of George Steinbrenner. He was obviously not the actor who portrayed George Steinbrenner. Right. But um, he Does will. he play him throughout? Yes, they both do. Because I, I don't know if he actually... I assumed he didn't actually appear in the show. No. But I wondered if they just had like... You never see him, right? You just see like his hands and stuff. He's like a... Who's the bad guy from Inspector Gadget? Um, <laughs> Doctor No. Doctor. Doctor. Oh, mad No. <laughs> Professor No. I don't think it's he has no. the cat. Yeah, he has the cat. Uh. Doctor Claw. Doctor No. So I'm gonna have to fill in details. It was either in the finale or in the Seinfeld remake in Curb. They. Got George Steinbrenner to actually appear and be in a scene. Playing himself? Playing himself. And he was so bad that they had to cut him. Oh, no. <laughs> there's, a, there's an interview that Larry David gave uh, where he talks about it. And he's like, he's like, called up right away. He was like, George, I'm sorry. He's like, got to cut me, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the man's self-aware. To your point about Jerry being a white man who skates through life, he has main character energy. He even says, like, I have a friend who's up, I have a friend who's down, mm. and now this friend is down and this friend is up. I kind of liked that this was a very, like, Jerry's, like, Jerry doesn't really do anything. No. He's the, he's the vehicles for the three characters to orbit around. Yeah. If one orbits around a vehicle. <laughs> I do like, his scene with Rachel was funny. Very, mm. He's like, okay. Well, it was nice dating you, and uh, bye. <laughs> That's probably a good reaction to breaking up that everybody should take. Uh, there, there was a couple of things that uh, Jerry said in this episode, like the thing about doubling your wardrobe, recruiting, recruiting homosexuals. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I can't even remember what the last time was about. 
Yep, not worth talking about. Coffee? Oh, coffee and then alcohol and... So, what's on for next week? Season even... six, episode one, The Chaperone. Oh, what's it about? Jerry dates Miss Rhode Island? Uh, however, as a contestant, she needs a chaperone, so Kramer tags along and ruins all their fun. Does she need a chaperone because she's 17? No. Okay. Do you have any corrections and or omissions? Last week we talked about how there was a time where there was always two movies about something. Oh, yeah. And we couldn't remember Prestige and the other one was The Illusionist. Ah. Um, so I gave some, some facts about the Hamptons house where they supposedly where they, this episode was set. Uh-huh. It's irrelevant. They were not there. It was just oh. for establishing. It was a house. The establishing that, shot? Yeah. Yeah, okay. But they didn't film there, of course. And I, I had this thought while editing the episode, where's this couple's other kid? They had a baby two years ago. Jerry says so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other kid running around. No. Somebody probably has to look after the other kid. Uh, so we couldn't really tell what a kishka was. It's various types of sausage or stuffed intestine with a filling made from meat, meal, often grain or potato. Kishka literally means guts. Mm. I looked up Kishka, yeah. The pictures on Wikipedia didn't look the most appetizing. It's like a haggis. Yeah. I like haggis. I was just listening to a, a podcast about a guy who smuggles haggis into the United States. Why does it need to be smuggled? Because in the United States, you are not allowed to sell lungs for consumption or include them in foodstuffs. Haggis has lungs in it? Yes. Oh, no. I don't like that. <laughs> so there is a product called, referred to as American style haggis. Oh. Um, but the lungs apparently give it a very like smooth and rich texture. Oh, I don't want to know that. Um, so people say that American style haggis is not the same. When you said American style haggis, I immediately thought of something tough and dry. Mm. So <laughs> I guess, you know. There you go. I guess it. it before I knew there was lungs in it, I liked haggis. Mm. I don't know. I don't like organ meats. Do you? I'm not particularly fond of them. I, I don't, I've never had haggis, so I don't know. I made you Remember eat tripe we, when we first met. You, I think we've been dating for what, like Couple two weeks? weeks? Yeah. You're like, better, better feed this guy tripe. Remember we tried to buy a haggis last yes. year and we called the butcher shop to reserve it and they were like, yeah, call us back in a week or we'll call you in a week. Yep. Or, and No haggis materialized. No, no, no haggis to be had. Nope. To be fair, I had it in Scotland, so it's probably going to be the best haggis you could get. So reportedly, this guy from Toronto that was smuggling it into the States, uh, people would say that it was the best haggis that they had had since they left Scotland. Why do you keep saying Toronto with two Ts? Toronto? I think I've always said Toronto. I'm, I'm Ugh, uh, weird. been gone for too long. I couldn't remember the name of the sports drink in Idiocracy. It's Brondo. <laughs> It's got what plants crave. <laughs> I say that about any sports drink. <laughs> so now I get it. And so we were talking about um, the full Monty. Yep. And how we didn't want to see octogenarians doing anything. Mm -hmm. I didn't look up all of them, but Robert Carlyle, the guy from Train Spotting and they're, Full they're, Monty. They're what, 45 years old? <laughs> he's 62. He's oh, not okay. an octogenarian. Sure. You were talking about how you thought in Indonesian that the translation to you know, you smell nice is like, you smell. A uh, white yoga teacher in Thailand told me that. <laughs> okay. Well, she's not totally wrong. Mm. And neither are you. There are 12 smell terms in the Indonesian language. Yeah. It's like there's snow. <laughs> yeah. So there's three fragrance terms, nine different descriptors for stinky stuff, including one Specific one for the smell of male sheep or goats. Parangus. It's a downright Parangus in here. <laughs> uh, and Hampton's tomatoes. There was once a Hampton's tomato lady, famously, Carol Olenek. So apparently there are Hampton's tomatoes. Tonash? Probably. That's all I got. Okie dokie. Well, we'll, uh, we'll see you next week with the premiere of season six is The Chaperone. Bye-bye. Good night, Katie. Good night, Derek.
Believe it or not, this is our podcast. Please subscribe at the end. If you subscribed, we would be happy. Please subscribe to us. Believe it or not, it's our podcast. Is that a Seinfeld reference?